Troy here and I'm back from the lake. I was at the lake for a couple days and I wanted to give you an update on what was going on down there and how the fishing was. Sorry, it's raining right now. It was rainy on the drive back too. It was kind of, sorry, here, let me show you quick. My weepy willow even bloomed and it's early March. Um, so anyway, it was a nasty drive back, uh, lots of accidents. And uh, it was a dirty drive too, the dirty rain. My boat tarp's covered in like all kinds of uh, sand and dirt. Here, I'll show you real quick. Let's go on a shop here real fast. Okay, let me wipe the screen off again. Sorry about that. I still haven't had a chance to put my upper fan up yet, which will dry, dry the boat coming down. So I got my big uh, porta cool fan going on right now with just air blowing on it. Look at my top. Look at this. My cover is really, it's nasty. It looks like it's gonna wash off fine. So um, I'm gonna fold it up and get inside the boat. And then I'm not gonna really take it off the boat yet though. So I can pull it out here soon and wash it. Uh, once the rain outside stops uh, but look at it back here too um, let me turn this off i got the my porta cool and i got it on fan mode and that really helps dry out uh things here in the shop the, the boat or the truck whenever it needs it uh, inside seems to be okay so let me um let me get the boat uncovered and i'll get some of the tack lock show you what i was doing okay so i got the boat uncovered it did get kind of wet down inside uh, even though it's an excellent cover, uh, whenever I drive in that much driving rain, it will push its way up underneath and inside, you know, uh, especially right here in the middle. Look at this. I wipe this off every time I leave the boat ramp. And I mean, this thing is filthy. That was a dirty, dirty rain uh, down below. It was a little wet. Again, once I get my fan put up here, it will be okay because I can force air down on it. Um, what I'm going to do here in a minute, I'm going to turn my furnace on in blower mode and just leave it on blower mode. And that will reach down in there also. I just don't want to always rely on that because uh, in the winter I want heat and I might want the fan at the same time, you know. Just having heat on and a fan going sometimes helps circulate hot air uh, even extra more, so. So anyway, that's what's going on there. Um, I'm gonna show you some of the lures here in a minute. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna put you on my neck thing so I can show them to you. Also too, I was down at Bass Pro doing some stuff there. Of course, I always come back with a bag from Bass Pro Shops. You know how that happens. Uh, so, oh, and real quick, uh, this is my um, All Aboard Marine uh, manual transducer mount. I'll have more on this later. It's in its stow position. This is how I put it on my boat uh, for when I trailer with my cover, because my cover will cover it this way. Of course, when it's operation, it's right up on the end. There's more about that later. That's from All Aboard Marine. Uh, just wanted to kind of show that to you. So, uh, it's starting to pick up some rain outside. Let me get that neck piece on uh, next, and I'll show you the, what I was using and what was happening with the fish. Okay, so I got you on the chesty here. It just makes it a little easier for me to show you the lures and, and some other stuff here. So, okay, here's the details on the lake. I was at, hopefully you can see this okay. I was at Table Rock Lake in Missouri here. I was there actually the 5th and the 6th, but I struck the 6th out because most of this information goes with the 5th. That's when I did the best. The 6th was a little tougher, uh, a smaller fish, and the weather was totally, actually totally different. So I'll explain in a minute. Anyway, um, this was the deal. The surface water temperature was 55.1 to 57, I found, right around there. Um, air temperature was about 67 at the highest, but it was really windy. 30 mile an hour gust south southwest. That gust made it feel much cooler than 67. I don't even know if it really reached 67. They said it did, but it sure didn't feel like it. Um, and I didn't put the water clarity on here. The water was actually pretty stained. It wasn't dirty. It was uh, murky. Uh, I think that was due with the wind stirring it up. Uh, it was probably about three foot deep uh, visibility on my lures, uh, so uh, so it was pretty pretty murky for a Table Rock Lake. Uh, fish caught uh, three to four foot deep. I caught on a jig, which I'll show you. Twelve to fifteen foot deep. I caught on a jig and a crankbait, which I'll show you. And then I seen some in the fifty to fifty two foot depth range that were active. I didn't catch any at that range, but I did have some turn and look at some of my baits, but I didn't hook any up. I didn't fish that depth very long, but I did see some activity down there. They were, they were active. They weren't really lethargic, but they didn't bite. So there's the details. Hopefully you kind of like how I did that like that. I'll get a thinner marker for the future ones. So uh, it could be, I can get a little more in there for you. So here's what was happening on the baits of uh, the jig was this right here. This was the, this is what I called the table rock candy jig from lost river lures. It's actually kind of a yellowy gold pumpkin with purple flake in there. Uh, Mark over at uh, Lost River Lures and I worked together and come up with this color and this works great on clear water and Table Rock Lake specifically. Uh, this trailer is actually a Zoom chunk craw and that's bourbon color. Now you may look at this and say, wow, what a weird color combo. And actually it is because it's, it's, it's spring. It's, and actually it's not spring, it's, it's late winter. It's meteorological spring. 
So technically, uh, you know, the crawfish, if it's if you're trying to mimic a crawfish, they're black turning into the molt, going into the blues and the pumpkin colors. So this really is a, an odd color, but it produced. I did try some of the other colors I just mentioned, you know, the molt, the blues and that, and uh, this actually produced best. So I caught most of the fish on this combo right here in that three to four foot depth. This is the three eighths ounce jig. When I fished and wanted to get down to the ones deeper and swim it in front of them, I went to the half ounce jig and I actually went to my River City Baits a warthog trailer. Now some guys say you don't need a twirl, twi twirl tail, twirl tail, say that multiple times, on the end of a jig, but I like it when you're dropping this jig down, a half ounce one down 12 to 15 foot to swim it in front of fish, that tail is twirling on the way down. You know, that way I was able to get it down there and swim it in front of them. So this color here and this, this actual uh, trailer right here, warthog, and actually it's real close to that bourbon. It's actually, if you look, it's real close. So I was using the same Table Rock candy jig, only in half ounce, and I was using this trailer for the deeper ones. This is a great, this is a great trailer also. Uh, uh, River City Baits, that's called the Warthog. So that's what I was doing when I was fishing the jig. When I was fishing the crankbait deep, I was throwing the Bill Lewis uh, deep diver here. These actually dive really nice. They dive fast. When you pause them, they don't raise too fast. They stay down, they, they come up slowly. Uh, these are these are great crankbaits. Actually, I caught most of the fish on this color right here. This one was tied on at the end of the day. It's still tied on as you can see it. Uh, this one was the one I caught most of them on, this purple. Uh, this really produced pretty well. Caught some good fish on this one. Caught a couple fish on this one. Uh, most of my, my best fish were on this here. Uh, no hogs, no real big bass, but some really good keepers on this. Three pound, two pound, a uh, couple two pounds on this. And uh, this caught some um, barely keepers. And then I actually also threw what we call a super spot. This looks like a rattle trap, but it's actually four inches long. And it's a Cotton Cordell super spot. They don't make these anymore. Uh, you might've seen this in a recent video I did where I touched up some of the paint and I actually added the gill, the bleeding gill look. Um, the weird thing on this, I caught all my smallest fish on my biggest four inch lure. So everybody says, go bigger, get bigger fish. Everything I caught on this was the smallest than them baits there. So just kind of ironic, it was kind of funny. So anyway, this is a super spot. This is really a good bait. It just was, a, it, was not, it was not the big producer of this trip. And I got hook covers on because I had my dog with me, Winston, he was fishing with me. And I like to put them on the front hook whenever I uh, get done using these. And um, here I came and do it with you. And, uh, and then that way I can hook the, um, I can hook it on a reel. And then that way it's less chance of him stepping on it when I have multiple rods on the deck. I gotta watch out for him, so. Um, these are the combos. This one you might look at because you recognize that yellow handle. This actually is a very low cost Ebu Garcia Jordan Lee edition. This was actually on clearance, long story short. Um, and I bought a few of them just because it was so, it was on clearance, it was so cheap. The rod was worth that and ended up the reel's a nice reel. Um, I bought these for spares. These were going to be spares in case I needed some you know, some extra reels and something happened, or uh, these are also gonna be maybe for my kayak when I was in swift water where I was afraid I was gonna lose some of my better combos, so I was gonna maybe use these for that. So I, they were just so reasonably priced, I had to grab some for backup spares or, or even maybe even doing a giveaway with. I even thought about doing that. So long story short, I wanted to fish with one to try one out. I thought, well, I ain't gonna let it sit in the shelf until I actually try it out. So I took this one to fish with, and actually this is the one I had the jig on and fished the jig with most of the time, and actually it performed extremely well. I'm very impressed with this, this combo, especially for the price point. Um, so this is what I fished in my jig with. I was using 12 pound copolymer from high seas. Uh, that was the line right there. This was the combo, worked great. Very, very impressed with this, this little setup right here. Um, not high dollar at all, but it got the job done and didn't let me down. Um, the crankbait, was thrown on uh, the crank, the Bill Lewis crankbait was thrown mostly on uh, this rig up right here. This is actually some, they don't make this line no more. This was Berkeley Transoptic Line. I loved Transoptic Line. They stopped making it. When they stopped making it, that's whenever I went experimenting with high C's. And, uh, but that was a great line. So anyway, that was, that's 14 pound, um, excuse me, take it back. That's 12 pound Berkeley Transoptic Line. That's what I was throwing the, uh, the diving crankbaits on from Bill Lewis. And then, uh, and, and this one here was um, the one I was throwing the super spot on. And uh, this is actually 12 pound monofilament by high, by high seas. High seas, 12 pound monofilament. Uh, these are medium heavy rods, so they have the soft action for the crankbaits. And uh, this one's a medium heavy. So, um, so that was the combos I was throwing mostly. I threw quite a bit more. I threw some finesse worms. Uh, I was throwing some other uh, rattle traps. I threw some other crankbaits. I threw some square bills. I threw some. Uh, different things. I threw a lot of different stuff, but this was the stuff I wanted to show you that caught me the most fish, 
got me the most activity and uh, I wanted to share with you. So, so uh, these are uh, Veritas rods uh, and this, this either Enigma reels. And again, this is the, this is that uh, Abu Garcia, Jordan Lee. So um, just wanted to share that with you. I'm going to get you back off of the chesty here and finish up and uh, let y'all get on with your day. Okay, I'm back off the neck thing here. I didn't, I didn't like talking and not being able to look at you. Kind of weird, just kind of looking around the shop with you on my neck. So, uh, what I wanted to also talk about, what made me think about it was Chris was talking about it up here on his, uh, is on his builds. Of course, he's talking about swim baits, and I recently got those swim baits in from River City Baits. Uh, I really wanted to try them on this last trip. Um, I didn't think it was the bait to be using to catch fish, but I wanted to show you the action of it in the water. It's kind of hard to show in my small test tank because it's only so long. I really wanted to show them to you in the water, and I wanted to experiment with them some more on certain hooks. So long story short again, I was heading to Table Rock Lake, and I didn't stop at Bass Pro Shops on the way down because I didn't have time, number one. And number two is, I knew on the way back, uh, Winston and I had to stop there for meet and greet, and they had the start of the Spring Fishing Classic. So I knew I wouldn't grab the hooks I wanted until we were on our way back. And I finally did get them. The Mustad Assault Hooks. These look really, really good. I think this is going to be the hook for that swim bait. This is the one I want to try on that swim bait. And I got a few different styles to try, but I think that's the ticket. We'll see. So anyway, I'll get them tried out soon. I'll go ahead and put the, rig one of them up, put it in a test tank, see what it does. But I want to get on the water to show you what it does and, and experiment with those different hooks. So we'll try to do that maybe next week. Uh, next week's going to be in the 70s here in the Midwest. So we're going to try to get back on the water some. Um, not necessarily just because it's a nice day, but uh, I know that's going to raise them big water lakes uh, maybe up a little more in temperature. We'll see what happens. It's supposed to be sunny and warm. Um, so we'll see what happens there. So anyway, we'll try to get on the water right away as soon as we can and show you more of that River City Bait swim bait. Um, but that's about it. I'm not going to show you what else is in the bag from Bass Pro. There's some stuff in there that's kind of cool, and I'll show that to you in another video later. Uh, so anyway, I can get back to it. Uh, I got a lot of cleaning up to do. Everything's all messy, wet, and disarray. So, and if you know me, you know I like a clean shop. So I got to get all this stuff cleaned up. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more. You have a good day.